Hey everyone, Chris here, and in this video, I'm going to talk about what you should look for when buying a running shoe. So it's a bit of a buyer's guide. I'm not gonna talk about specific shoes that much, but the kind of things that you need to know when you go out and buy some running shoes. This question comes up a lot from the athletes that I coach. It comes up a lot in my running Facebook group, which if you're not a member of, it would be great to have you in there because there is literally thousands of us talking about running and sometimes it's you just don't know what to shoot to buy and you're just buying for the first time sometimes maybe you've had some injuries and you're thinking okay maybe the shoes are the problem and i need to change it up so in this video we'll talk about the features that running shoes typically have we'll look at the evidence to see if some of these features can help us reduce injury or improve performance or run faster, we'll go over to my shoe pile and we'll look at a couple of my favorite shoes but won't dwell on that for too long. And then we'll also look at other stuff you can do if you are getting injured and thinking it might be the shoes, then what else could be the cause of your injury and what can you do about that? So if we look at a typical running shoe then we've got the upper, we've got the, the bottom, the sole of it, and there's a bunch of different features you might find here. So you've got the amount of cushioning in the sole. For example, this one is a considered a race shoe. It's got very little cushioning in there. Compare that to something like this Hoka, which has a ton of cushioning at the bottom. You also find different flexibility. This one has some flex. This one's got quite a lot of flex, although they are old, compared to something like this. This is a trail shoe, and this doesn't flex nearly as much. Then you've got the upper, so you've got your tongue, and what's the normally a mesh at the top, depending on the shoe you've got. And then on the inside, you might have some arch support as well. So this one's... This one's actually a neutral shoe. It's difficult to tell just by looking at them, whereas this one is classified as a support shoe because it has this support in the arch so that if you're collapsing inward, if you're pronating, then it, the idea is it gives you some more stability. So shoe companies tend to sell shoes with different levels of cushioning and also different levels of support from neutral to support shoes. The question is, does any of that make a difference? Should you need to match it up to what you need? Well, when I started running, I would just go down, try a bunch of shoes on, find the one that was most comfortable, and I was just running that, and it went fine for a while, and then everyone said, oh yeah, you need to go down to a professional running shop and get them to fit you or you're just gonna pick up injuries all the time. So I went down to my local running shop, they put me on a treadmill, they filmed me, and they said, oh yes, you need some expensive support shoes. The question is, did I? Well, I also got a running gait analysis done by my local physiotherapist, who I trust a bit more to do a running gait analysis because there's no real extra incentive there that's, I pay them the money, they do the running analysis, they give me some advice and his advice was you can improve your technique and that should help you reduce injury, but the kind of shoe that you wear isn't really important. Compare that to a running shop that literally makes all their money out of selling expensive running shoes and that's just a biased opinion. It's impossible for them to be unbiased when the money they make is driven by them selling you expensive shoes. So in general, now I've just gone back to finding the most comfortable shoe I can, and that has served me really well doing marathons, doing Ironmans, doing ultra marathons. I just find a shoe that is comfortable. Sometimes I don't even do that, as we'll talk about a little later in this video. But I, I'm just one person and a sample size of one is always pretty terrible. 
So let's look at what the evidence says. I went and I searched for academic research and this is what I came up with. So this first study looks at whether all these features like adding support and uh, changing the, the shape of the shoe and adding features really reduces the amount of injury. So it took evidence from a load of studies and reviewed them all and the outcome was that there's really no convincing evidence that changing the features on the shoe reduces injury. So all this stuff that people are putting in, nobody's managed to prove that it actually works. Now you could say, okay, yeah, but so no one's done the study yet, but actually the stuff does work. But there are a couple of specific studies that have looked at it and we'll look at those now. So this first one looks at it, what's called the planter shape. So it looks at the bottom of your foot and says, if we look at the shape of this and we match that to a shoe, does that reduce injury? And the study found that in fact, no, looking at your planter shape doesn't reduce injury. This next study looks at the shape of your arch. So again, it says, can we look at the shape of an arch, match that to a shoe and reduce injury by doing that? And again, the answer was no. Adding arch support or looking at the arch shape and trying to match that to the correct level of support doesn't seem to reduce injury. So there's no benefit to any of that there. This final study I think is the most interesting because it looks at all the features and support and what it says is, it talks about path of least resistance and it says, well really the best thing you can do is run your natural way because if you run naturally, then you're gonna be injury free more than someone who tries to force their body to do something else. And they said, the best way to detect how to run naturally is try on the shoes and feel they're comfortable because we think that treadmill videos and experts and scanning our feet can tell us what the best shoes are to allow us to run naturally. But this study says, no, actually the most effective way to do it is to try on the shoe and if it feels good, it's not just that it happens to feel good or you get on with that, it's that it feels good because it's allowing your body to make the most natural movement pattern. And when you make the most natural movement pattern, that's when you stay injury free. So literally your body is the best detector that we can find so far as to finding what the right shoe it is. And it's comfort if you try it on and it feels good, that's because it's letting your body move naturally and hopefully that will keep you injury free. So the science seems to support this idea that we should just try on the shoes, find the most comfortable ones for us and buy those that we don't need to do any of this scanning or look at our pronation and go for the support shoes or the neutral shoes. We should just find what feels good come over here to shoe corner and we'll just have a quick dig through my shoes and I'll talk about some of the things I, I like and I don't like and how I buy them. Um, it will be obvious that I have quite a lot. So these are these are what I ran in for ages. These are the Nike Zoom Spam 2 shoes. I actually have two pairs of these so I have one pair with the regular laces in that I use when I'm running and I have one with these elastic laces in and I use these for triathlon so that I don't have to bother tying the shoes I can just pull them on and if I'm on like a sprint triathlon or an Olympic distance I can get them on really quick ignore socks out of transition in like a minute but I find these elastic laces quite annoying so when I'm regular running then I am tying the shoes then I've also got a couple of pairs of Brooks. I, I can't remember what this make are. And these are the, these are the Asteria. Does it say on the bottom? I don't think it does. Uh, the, the Ravenna, Ravina, not sure. Um, use these quite a lot. These are quite comfy. The thing that really annoys me with shoes is the toe box. It needs a good mesh because if it's got any plasticky stuff up here, then that really rubs on the top of my feet and it annoys me. So uh, these are pretty terrible in the wet, but they're really comfortable 
in the dry and then so since then I have changed it up a bit and here we've got uh, so these are the Nike Vaporfly 4% and these are the Hoka Clifton 6 quite different in profile so what's super interesting here is that these are a mild support shoe these are a support shoe and these are a neutral shoe so the idea that i need some kind of, or you need some kind of special support or lack of support in your shoe well i get on fine running in neutral shoes running in support shoes running in somewhere in between it doesn't really matter in the science backs that up that it doesn't really change anything so very different profiles here these ones don't have much cushioning these hokers have a bunch of cushioning and these are the nike vaporfly four percent these are the carbon plated ones that make you go four percent faster i've tried it they genuinely do make yourself make you go four percent faster but they're super expensive and I've, I've already broken one pair of them so i wouldn't recommending these if you're starting out because it's a, it's a huge investment but they are really nice shoes they're also pretty uncomfortable so even the the studies suggesting well you just need to find something comfortable actually if you're willing to bear uncomfort for a bit more speed you don't even need them to be comfortable but i would recommend you buy some comfortable ones and these are comfortable these are comfortable these are comfortable all super comfortable i think we've gone through most of my shoes now i think everything else in here is cycling shoes other than these these are the hoka oh what are these called the uh, torrent they're called the hoka torrent these are trail shoes what are trail shoes well they've got a bit more protection but also they've got this nice grip underneath so if you're running through mud if you're running over uneven surfaces dirt that will give you a bit more grip whereas if you compare that to these shoes that really have these flat bottoms they're not going to give you much grip so if you're running in mud and snow these things slide all over the place these things give you a bit more grip so if you are doing a lot of off-road running you might want to get some trail shoes now i only use these when it's snowy or muddy in the winter actually on dirt tracks in the forest the rest of the time i just use my nice comfy road shoes because i find road shoes more comfy than trail shoes but when it gets super muddy i will bring these out to give me a bit of grip so in short we looked at the science that seemed to suggest that it didn't really matter what the shoes features were and my shoe choices really back that up because I run in everything from no support to full support and it works out fine either way if you find a shoe that is comfortable for you and then you will probably have happy days so if shoes aren't the magic answer to reducing injuries staying healthy and just feeling comfortable while running then what is well there's a number of things we can do so one is to improve our technique if we're running with the correct technique then biomechanically we're just less likely to get injured how can you do that well there are a bunch of technique drills you can probably find all over the internet or you could do a specific course like my resilient running course or you can go to a coach and get a coach to help you improve your technique or a local running club that does technique sessions all of that if you can get your technique improved then you're less likely to get injured next the science suggests that rotating around several pairs of shoes will also help you stay injury free why well the hypothesis is that in different shoes we move slightly differently and so if we always wear the same shoes then we're going to stress the exact same part of our legs every time and we're not going to work on the other muscles in our legs whereas if we're doing slightly different things with our legs every time we'll spread that load around and we'll make sure that every part of our leg gets worked in slightly different ways 
and therefore we're not likely to have any weak spots that are liable to injury. Along the same lines, we can cross train. So we can do things like cycling, we can play other sports, because again, that's going to make our legs move in different ways. And so again, we're going to be working all we're going to be working the legs in a bunch of different ways which will keep them healthy it also means that we're going to be able to work on our fitness without making everything running and load bearing because running is a load bearing activity you're constantly hitting the ground and because when running you don't have one foot on the floor at all times like walking it is kind of like skipping and jumping with every step what you end up doing is putting up to three times your body weight every time you come crashing down on that leg that you land on and that can be quite strenuous on the body so if we can cross train then not only can we work our legs in different ways but we can work on our fitness while still taking some of the stress off our legs finally a great way to stay injury free is to work on your strength and conditioning so by doing specific strength and conditioning exercises you will build up extra strength in your legs to make them more resilient. You will again work your legs in a way that you might not work them while running, which means that if your technique does change and you get fatigued towards the end of a long run, you won't suddenly start working muscles that are not used to it because your strength and conditioning will kick in. Again, there's a bunch of good strength and conditioning videos out there, or you could do a course like my strength and conditioning for runners course any of these options is good and will just help you build up that strength and build up that resilience in your legs. So in conclusion, you should find some shoes that are comfortable and those will be fine because the science says that that's the best way to find them. And if you are getting injuries, it's probably not the shoes. Changing shoes probably isn't going to be the magic answer for you you probably need to look at some cross training, some strength and conditioning, some technique work, and that will give you the best chance of staying injury free. Another pair of shoes, unfortunately, I'm not saying don't buy another pair of shoes, but it's not gonna be this magic answer to your injury problems. And if you're brand new and just buying shoes for the first time, try a bunch on, see what's comfortable, and those will be the best shoes for you. You really don't need to think about it much more than that. Hopefully that was useful. If so, then please give this video a thumbs up. I'll stick some resources in the description. And if you're into running, I would love for you to subscribe to the channel because I publish a load of running content like this that I think will be really useful for you. I'd love to know how you get on with your running and your shoe buying. What's your process for shoe buying? Let me know in the comments and I hope to see you soon. Mm -hmm.